can cover anything like this. It has a negative angle. Now again, we think, oh crap, even and odd identities, right? And remember that when you have the um, trig function of any negative angle, it's always going to produce that, neg that negative function of that positive angle. Right? And that's your even odd identities. Yes? And that is, that is the same for all the trig functions except for cosine and secant, because those are functions that are even. Right? They're symmetrical about the y-axis. So, um, so there we have this. Now, again, thinking of our unit circle idea, when is cosecant, which is, if you guys remember last chapter, cosecant is going to be 1 over y. So when is 1 over y equal to 2 squared of 3 over 3? And that's kind of a little, eh, a little too much to kind of think about, right? I would, I would at least think so. So why don't we rewrite this in terms of, um, in terms of sine? Because isn't cosecant and sine reciprocals of one another? Right? If cosecant is hypotenuse over adjacent, or 1 over y, or I'm sorry, opposite, right? Then sine of theta is 3 over 2 radical 3. Just the flipped, right? Because it's opposite over hypotenuse, or y over 1. Don't you guys agree? They're just reciprocals. So we've been practicing the reciprocals. They just flip them. That's it. Now, I got to do this because still, we don't recognize this y coordinate here. So when we rationalize the denominator, ah, that looks a little bit more familiar, doesn't it? And then now we have a negative on the outside. So now I can simplify that out. So I have sine of theta equals negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, so now we look at our unit circle and we say, oh, when is the sine of theta, or sine of what angle, is negative square root of 3 over 2? And we say, well, let's just look at here. It's going to be negative. Sine is negative. I'll just do another quadrant. So we know that it's positive in the first quadrant. I always like to find the first quadrant, because that's usually the easier for me to remember. It's positive at pi over 3. So if we need negative, that means we need the negative version down here. Same reference angle, just in the third and the fourth quadrant. And then since we're so good with our unit circle, we know that those two angles is pi over 3 over pi. So that would be 4 pi over 3. And then we have pi over 3 short of 2 pi. So that would be 5 pi over 3. So if I was asking you to find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, those would be our two solutions. Now let's go ahead and find all the solutions. Here's your two solutions. And again, let's like think about the sine function for a second. Guys, how often how often do like our how often does the sine graph repeat? 2 pi, right? Now, again, sometimes we worked on ones where it can like where we have our solutions that it can occur a little bit more often, but that works. Like think about this, guys. If here's your solution, if I add 2 pi, am I going to get another solution? If I subtract 2 pi, do I get a solution? Yes. And do I have to do that for both of them? Because they don't have any, they're not equal distance from each other, are they? So I have to add 2 pi to both solutions. So theta equals 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And theta equals 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And there you go. Any last minute questions on that one?